Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. To this uh, short uh, press briefing, I want to start by thanking you for having made it uh, to come through at very short notice and on a Sunday. I think this uh, speaks to the dedication that you attach to your work and commitment to ensure that we keep the nation informed. So I think that is a, um, a big part on your back as the scribes. We want to state that uh, we have seen what has been written by one uh, Fred member of the Socialist Party. And uh, member seems to be insinuating that uh, finally there is a realization on the part of uh, His Excellency the President to have to go to visit China. He seems to be um, literally being petty by saying that uh, it's the common sense that has finally prevailed on the part of His Excellency the President and that uh, he has uh, previously espoused uh, diplomatic uh, ignorance and big-headedness. And these are the words coming from a person who aspires to be president of the Republic of Zambia. Um, we feel really taken aback and um, uh, it's unfortunate that a person who runs uh, a political party and uh, professes to be a government in waiting can utilize such kind of uh, horrible words uh, on a head of state. I think what is important for the people of Zambia to understand is that the relationships between China and Zambia uh, are very strong ties that uh, span a very long time, uh, starting with our forefathers, in, uh, Chairman Mao and Dr. Kaunda, and they have uh, remained strong and uh, have only grown from strength to strength uh, since then. It is also important to note that there is no acrimony between China and Zambia. There is none, there's never been any, and we do not foresee in the near future any at all. What we have seen is that even as of today, you are able to see uh, uh, strengthened relationships and continuous engagement uh, between the two heads of state, uh, President Nakainde Hichilema and President uh, Xi Jinping. And they have continued to uh, uh, discuss, collaborate, and talk, uh, not only around issues to do with debt restructuring, but also uh, other bilaterals. And you have seen that the engagement between the Zambian government and that of China has been at various levels. And you have seen that our technocrats have been traveling to China back and forth. Our ministers have been traveling to China back and forth. It is not too long ago, just about a week or so ago, we had uh, the Commerce Minister and his delegation also in China. And this shows you that we have had these relationships for a long time. They have never been strained. And therefore, this journey can only but go on. We must also um, emphasize uh, to Mr. Membe, as he espouses his uh, diplomatic ignorance, that he, as, a, as a nation, you do not undertake a state visit <laughs> uninvited. You ought to be invited for you to go to uh, a sovereign nation. You don't just up and go. You require an invitation for you to go and visit another country. And now we have the invitation to go and visit China. There's nothing to do with the realization. There's nothing to do with the common sense coming upon us. In fact, it should have been common sense on the part of Mr. Membe to realize that actually uh, for you to visit a foreign country, you ought to be invited. Just like we have been invited in this particular case, and Zambia will undertake a state visit to China. And it will be led by our president, His Excellency, President Haga in the on that state visit. You are all aware that the debt trap that was left by the patriotic front involved speaking to various stakeholders. And it was a complex work to ensure that we untangle it. And this is a thing the president described as a python around our neck and that we needed to untangle it so that we're able to breathe again. And to do that required that we spoke to so many different stakeholders. And this is not 
by mistake. Again, I want to quote the president's words. It, it is not by chance. It's orchestrated. Some of you may not be aware, actually, that talks with these stakeholders in this uh, debt arrangement that we are in started between President Akainde Ishrem and the various stakeholders started as far back as 2015. Yes, 2015. You know that we had a vision and worked hard and knew that we were going to win the 2016 elections. But of course, they stole those ones. But the talks between the president and uh, uh, the stakeholders in the debt scenario started as far back as 2015. And this is only but a continuation. Nothing has been left to chance. All this has been orchestrated to try and put Zambia back on its feet. All the relationships that were damaged internationally have been reconstructed and Zambia today remains a country that is a participant internationally. Our president and our people have again been recognized internationally and respected internationally. After we had a group of people that ran this country and ran our reputation into the ground, people that had the audacity to borrow money and failed to pay and proudly stated we will not pay. Surely. You, you, you can't operate like that where you, you you go and borrow money and then with audacity turn around and tell the people that you can't pay. That is why even when we were dealing with this debt restructuring, for them, as irresponsible as they are, they are running calls that, no, but you should have gotten debt cancellation. You don't borrow money to cancel the debt, you borrow money to pay back. And that is why you restructure so that you are in a position to make money to be able to pay back. Because remember, this money you borrow is also taxpayers' money where it is coming from. It's the people's money. And you have to pay it back. And that's what a responsible government does. It will restructure the debt, get enough headroom, and be able to pay back that which it owes. So all these are things that um, Fred Membe ought to know and understand. But this man does not understand how the world works. This is a character who helped the patriotic front to get into government. And upon them getting into government, the man felt he had arrived and stopped paying tax. And you want to be president of this country. It is ignorant and criminal not to pay tax. Even when you are a corporate citizen, you ought to pay your taxes. But out of this same ignorance and the criminality, the gentleman stopped paying tax until he was caught up. Remember, in Sony, a room too. How can you want to be a president of a country where you do not contribute tax? You are a tax evader. For you to run the country, you depend on the treasury. For the treasury to be uh, uh, existent, it depends on taxes. So if you do not contribute to the treasury, how do you expect to run a country using a treasury whose finances you don't contribute to? You actually take away. It's a criminal. It's ignorance of the highest order. Right now, the whole country is in jubilation when it comes to the uh, partial withdrawal of the 20% under NAPSA. But all the people that worked under the character, when they go to NAPSA, they don't know them because they didn't even contribute NAPSA failing to contribute statutory uh, 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 contributions. And today, uh, more, many journalists, unfortunately, even when they go to NAPSA, they can't even access the 20% because there's nothing. The man did not contribute. So I we just want to make it very clear to him that running a country is not an easy thing. And running a country is not as easy as running, for example, a newspaper that you failed to run and rain it down. Running a country is complex. It requires dedication. It requires somebody that knows what they are doing. You can't run a country based on vindictiveness, based on bitterness, based on hurt. Because what is clear is that we all know Membe never wanted President Haraide Hitchema to become president in this country. We all know that Membe didn't want UPND to be uh, 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 a party in office in this country. This is orchestrated. Over the many years that he spent investing in his <coughs> editorial comments, 
speaking badly about the UPND and its leadership. You remember the comments to do with Bantustan and how he painted the political party as a tribal political party and never to be entrusted with uh, authority in government. He didn't want this. But today, Hakainde is president and UPND is in office. Now you have to start saying all sorts of things just to make sure that you get the people to be angry with their president, with their government. It's impossible. The people of Zambia are able to see that they have put in place a functional government, a functional president. When they face calamities, they are sorted out head on. They face load shedding, they are present faced it head on. They face debt restructuring, they are present faced it head on. They face uh, uh, um, an uphill battle in as far as free education was concerned, they are present faced it head on. And they are able to see that they have a president who is able to take on challenges head on and resolve them. So I think going forward now, Mr. Member, your five minutes of fame is up. You must know that now when you speak, we will counter what you say. And like I always say, and it's becoming a chorus, where there's untruth, we shall put truth there. I know that you may want to come back at VS and all, but Tao is a civil servant, he's too junior for me. Let me make it very clear to you, Mr. Mepe. You are at the level of assistant director in government. You deal with me. You will not be dealt with by any minister. You will not be dealt with by... Nobody will deal with you. You will deal with me. Because as far as we are concerned, you are at the level of an assistant director. And I am director. Thank you very much. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.